Hi, this is Cerulea from Barocco's Knit Bits newsletter. I'm going to show you today how to do a stitch called the Spider's Web. I first came across this bit of embroidery in Kristen Nicholas's book Colorful Stitchery, which is a really nice introduction to embroidering. And you can embroider onto felted knits or regular knits. This is a bit felted. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's a, it's a lot easier to embroider on felt than it is to embroider on knitwear. When you're embroidering onto knitted fabric that hasn't been felted, you just want to make sure that you're not stretching or distorting the shape of the fabric. Just let it put something in between. I like to put maybe a book or a magazine in between the layers so you don't stitch things closed. Um, and then just don't distort it. Don't put an embroidery hoop around it. That'll make it stretch out of shape and the embroidery will look funny when you take it off. So the first thing I do is I thread a regular yarn needle onto about a yard of yarn. And this yarn is going to be the yarn that shows, so choose the color you want. Um, it's also going to form a frame. First what we're going to do is make a little spoke shape. So what you do is you come up from behind. This is the middle, middle of the circle. And then decide how, one, how wide you want your circle to be. So you want to make the radius, which is half of the diameter, you want to make that your first spoke. So you just take a stitch and point the needle back towards the middle. And then you're just going to continue to do this all the way around until you've built a frame that later on you'll go back and weave on. Try not to make the spokes too far apart. So I'm done making my frame that I'm going to weave around on and the only rule that you have is that they have to there have to be an uneven number of spokes or not an uneven, an odd number of spokes. So um, before I made my last stitch I went around and counted and I found that I only had nine so the last stitch was going to be ten which is an even number of course and so I, I managed to squeeze in mm. eleven. Two more. So I, my total came up to eleven. So then you're going to just start and go over or under, over, under, over Pull the yarn through. This is over that spoke, so I'm going to go under this next one, over this one, under. It's not going to look so neat in this first one because you're getting the spokes kind of all aligned. So I just went under, I'm going to go over, then under. This is something that you probably learned in grade school or at summer camp in arts and crafts really simple. So just look at the last one you did, it's under. So I'm going to go over, under, over, under. I like to do a few with my needle before I bring the yarn through, but you could do either way. So I'm about halfway done. And if you run out of yarn, which is not too common, but if you run out of yarn you just um, start again, leave yourself a tail, I didn't say that, but when I started I left about a four to six inch tail so I could go back later and weave that in. And you could actually switch to a different, a different color if you wanted to get a nice little multicolor dot. So as you get to the last few rounds, you're gonna be it's gonna be a little harder to find the little spokes. But keep going around. I like to make it so that these are really packed with yarn and you can barely see the spokes, they just kind of disappear. These have a really nice three-dimensional look. I think they look sort of like a tightly furled rose or um, a ranunculus, something like that. Okay, so now I'm all done making my little, my little blossom, um, my little abstract flower. So what I like to do now, just to finish it off and kind of make it a little bit more interesting, is I like to sew a few beads in the center of the flower. This is a trick I've used for many, many projects. So I anchor my thread and I just grab a size E or 6 glass bead. It's just something I always have around because it's um, pretty common for knitters to use that. You can thread that and use that in knitting with fingering weight yarn. And they're pretty inexpensive. So I just grab a bead and kind of sew haphazardly, just take a little running stitch just to tack it down in there. I think the, the less planned it looks the better. Usually it only takes about three. 
Oops. So yeah, just go right back down. You can see here I'm using a bright yellow thread. Um, you could do a matching thread, but I like to just have a little extra color. So after you're done, you're just going to make a few tack stitches in the back and cut your yarn. I like to place different size ones. You could do different colors. These are a little bit far apart. Maybe I'll fill in here with some other embroidery. But I hope that was fun.